here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope everyone's doing well. This is my very first video and I am going to make it as brief as possible. It is going to be a series of topics and series of different concepts that students these days are having really difficulty understanding. So we're going to be starting with the easier topics and we're going to catch up on the difficult ones and we're going to make it as simple as possible so that it can help you in your professional exams and it might help you in your clinical medicine. So today we are going to be talking about talking about a very simple topic that is a typical spinal nerve. I know most of you already know about what is a typical spinal nerve and I guess everybody have the idea. But most of the people do not get <clears throat> how the circuit inside the spinal cord works. So we're going to try to understand the basics and the different type of uh, different type of incomings and outgoings. So let's start with a very basic spinal cord segment. A spinal cord segment is it is a cross section of the spinal cord that is placed at the level of that could be any level. So there is there are two horns like anterior horn and there is a posterior horn. There is no intermediate horn so then we should, so we know that that this is not from the <coughs> This is not from the thoracic level segment. It is a level that is present above the cervical region or present in the lumbar region. Only there are two horns present. There is no intermediate horn. So if there was an intermediate horn, we should know that, that it was a thoracic level word. Thoracic level word if at where we took the spinal cord set. So before we before I know, I, sh I want you to remember these two things. The anterior horns that are present in the anterior column of the spinal cord, these two horns, they always always have motor neuron innervations like all the neurons that are present here they carry the they carry the cell bodies for the motor neurons that can be categorized into alpha and gamma later on but let's keep it simple for now the anterior core anterior horn is the motor horn always it always carries the motor innervation and then we can come to the posterior horns the posterior horns always always carry sensory information inside the cord so let me make it clear to you first of all all the sensory information is going to come from a cell body that is present outside the central nervous system and it is going to come into the posterior column of the spinal cord <coughs> here it is going to relay into a number of different neurons that are present inside the inside the spinal cord they are the localized neurons which we shall get into the detail later. But first of all, I'm going to talk about the different basic circuits of a typical spinal cord. So all the sensory information is going to come from the posterior column and it is going to enter into the spinal cord and it is going to integrate inside the cord and then it is going to enter into the anterior column from where it is the information is going to go out and it is going to innervate different type of glands, different type of muscles, different type of uh, response organs. <coughs> So let's make, let me uh, add a little more details into it. So when there is a posterior root and then there is an anterior horn, it, all the sensory information is going inside the spinal cord from the posterior cord and all the motor innervations are coming from the anterior column of the spinal cord. When these two columns before, before they make their anterior horn is totally motor and posterior horn is totally uh, sensory innervations but these horns do divide into a posterior ramus and an anterior ramus when we study the different type of plexuses like lumbar plexus like cervical plexus we have like anterior primary ramus and sec and posterior primary ramus like these are the rami that we are talking about like anterior primary rami of l1 for example and a posterior primary rami of l2 these are the two rami that we are talking about in those like, in those cases so all the information that is going of let's assume that there is a sensory stimulus that is going to into the central nervous system it has a cell body inside here outside the central nervous system and it goes inside the spinal cord it makes a synapse here but it is going to exert its action by an anterior column so an anterior column neuron have its axon leaving outside the anterior 
anterior horn of the spinal cord and then it is going to go into the anterior root and then it is going to go into the anterior primary ramus or could be posterior primary ramus all the anterior all the anterior abdominal muscles are derived uh, abdominal cavity muscles and thoracic wall they are innervated by the anterior primary ramus and all the most posterior so to be very precise the anterior and posterior primary ramus can both uh, carry the motor and sensory informa information because this uh, because a sensory information that can be coming from the anterior abdominal cavity or uh, abdominal abdominal wall it can be coming from there and then it can be passing from to the posterior root and to the posterior column of the spinal cord this is the basic plan like all the sensory information is going to come inside the spinal cord from the posterior posterior horn and all the motor information is going to leave the central uh, the inside spinal cord from the anterior column of the spinal cord now uh, let's talk about different type of uh, let's talk about the basic reflex arc that is performed from a single segmental arc a single mono reflex arc a single, single segmental reflex arc let's talk about that so uh, we ha i have told you about that all the sensory information is going to come into the posterior column and all the motor information is going to leave the anterior horn of the spinal cord so if i draw a spinal cord segment here it could be at any level as i have told you it might have a it have an um, intermediate bone so it can be a lumbar one or thoracic level a segment so so i say the sensory information is coming inside the posterior horn of the spinal cord and it is entering the spinal cord and it enters here there are different lamina into the gray matter of the spinal cord we should uh, ignore that for a moment so there are different type of lamina and it when it come inside the, it has a cell body outside the neuron which is the posterior root ganglion So it enters into the posterior root, and here it synapses with an other neuron that is an interneuron that is connecting with the posterior root and the anterior horn of the spinal cord segment, so that a reflex arc can be completed. So this neuron has this axon present; it has axonal terminal present at the anterior column. But in a, but it was as I told you, all the motor neurons that are present inside the anterior column of the spinal cord, anterior horn of the spinal cord segment. So, oh, so if I touch here, if I uh, like a tendon reflexes, like bicipital tendon reflex or uh, different type of tendon reflexes or deep tendon reflexes, you can say that. So, if there is a stimulus, like if there is a hammer. that is knocked at the knee joint a reflex would be elicited so it is going to carry the sensory information into the posterior root can posterior root ganglion and it is going to go into the central nervous system and it is going to synapse into an interneuron that is a localized neuron present inside the spinal cord that is connecting the posterior and the anterior root and it is doing what it is going to innervate to uh, excite the anterior horn the anterior neuron present into the anterior horn of the spinal cord and as i have told you all the motor information is going to leave the from the anterior horn of the spinal cord so here it is a cell body is present in the anterior horn and it is going to leave and it is going to innervate the muscle and then we are going to have our tendon jerk so this is a mono synapse this is a reflex arc so as we we are seeing that no part of the higher brain centers is involved into the formation of this arc so this arc is pretty much simple it is a mono segmental arc as and as we go into the details there are different uh, different contribution of a gamma motor neurons and different contribution of the alpha motor neurons is available as we know that uh, muscles like our uh, Uh, our major muscles of our body they are moved by the alpha motor neurons and our uh, intrafusal muscle fibers that are just the uh, golgi tendon organs and uh, uh, muscle spindles they are innervated by the gamma motor neurons so basically gamma motor neurons 
carry gamma motor neurons are innervating number so gamma motor neurons are innervating the intrafusal fibers intrafusal fibers when struck by the tendon they are innervating going into the posterior column of the spinal cord and they are innervating an interneuron interneuron is going into an alpha motor neuron alpha motor neuron is innervating the extrafusal fibers and a and it flexes elicited so this is the information that, that is a uh, stretch reflex and it is present uh, it is discussed to a higher level so basically you just have to remember that there is a posterior horn there is an anterior horn all the sensory information is going from a posterior horn into the spinal cord and it is relaying into the interneuron then the anterior horn then anterior horn carries all the what which kind of information you should recall it by yourself it should carry the motor information and it so this was all relating a uh, spinal cord segment and a typical spinal nerve i'm going to be covering a lot more topics regarding uh, different type of metabolisms and different type of concepts that students normally have problem understanding and <clears throat> we're going to have a long journey ahead of us and i hope you are uh, make sure to like and subscribe and that's all for today er signing off